Take a look at the following fake data. Here we have three variables. Firstly, weekly physical exercise, followed by a previous test score out of 100, and lastly, the test score out of 100. So let's now see how we can build gradient boosted trees to predict test score. For the first step, we calculate the mean test score, and this forms our initial prediction. So the mean test score is 56. Next, we calculate the residuals. This is given by the test score minus our average prediction, which was 56, and these are given here. Next, we build a decision tree to predict the residuals. So here we use weekly physical exercise and previous test score to predict residual. And this results in the following decision tree. Next, we combine outputs to form a new set of predictions. So we take our first initial average prediction and we add that to our decision tree. So for example, for the first entry here, the weekly physical exercise was a no, previous test score less than or equal to 32.5, that's a no, since it's 82 and that's bigger. And so we subtract seven. So 56 minus seven gives us 49, which is our prediction. And we do the same for all the entries. We then calculate a new set of residuals. So now that we have our predictions, we simply do the test score minus prediction to give us our residual. And so here are our residuals. We then build a decision tree to predict the new set of residuals. And so here we're using weekly physical exercise and previous test score out of 100 to predict the residual. And this results in the new decision tree. We then combine outputs to form a new set of predictions. So we had our initial average prediction. We add that to the outputs of our first decision tree, followed by the outputs of our second decision tree. So let's now go through this first entry here. Try to remember that we have weekly physical exercise as no and previous test score out of 100 as 82. And so when it comes to predicting our first entry, we do 56 minus seven as before. And lastly, previous test score less than or equal to 72, that's a no. And so this predicts five, and so we add five. So 56 minus seven plus five gives us 54. And so that's the prediction for our first entry. And we apply the same logic for the rest of our entries. We then keep generating new sets of residuals, building decision trees and forming predictions until user-defined parameters are satisfied. So for example, the number of trees. The user may set the number of trees to 100, for example. So noticed with our example here, we managed to get exact predictions very quickly. So with the first entry, we got an exact prediction of 54, followed by 89 and 72. And for the last two entries, we have quite close predictions. Gradient boosted trees without adjustment can often overfit our data. To deal with this, we introduce what is called the learning rate gamma. And this is what we scale the outputs of all of our decision trees by. So let's now go through an example if we were to introduce a learning rate. Setting gamma equals to 0.15 would scale our decision tree outputs by this value. So if we were to introduce this learning rate on the first decision tree built here, what would this result in? Taking a look at the first two entries, our predictions now become 56 plus 0.15 times minus seven, which equals 54.95. And for the second entry, 56 plus 0.15 times 33, which gives us 60.95. So although not as accurate as before, we have managed to move towards our target value with a smaller step. The learning rate therefore decreases variance. So in summary, to build gradient boosted trees for regression, we first take the average of the target value. We calculate a set of residuals by doing our target values minus our predictions. We then build a decision tree on these residuals and we generate a new set of predictions, 
which can be scaled by a learning rate to reduce overfitting. We repeat steps two, three, and four, that is calculating a set of residuals, followed by building a decision tree on these residuals, followed by generating a new set of predictions. And this is done until user set parameters are matched. So for example, number of trees. What are some advantages of gradient boosted trees? Firstly, gradient boosted trees are able to capture complex relationships in data, often leading to high algorithm performance. They can be interpreted to give the importance of different features in predicting a target variable. Also, the algorithm has parameters that can be tuned for better performance, such as setting the learning rate and number and depth of the trees. A disadvantage, however, of gradient boosted trees is that they can overfit the training data without proper adjustment. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you learned something new.